I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first please call roll. Here. 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 All right, we move to item number two, public comment. All questions and comments will be directed to the mayor. The speaker will be given three minutes to comment. The speaker will be allowed one opportunity to speak. If anyone has anything, please come forward. There didn't seem to be any content whatsoever on a political level. And I think you need to rethink the decision not to allow them to use the billboard to um, <coughs> say that there's going to be another meeting and what date and time it is. Secondly, the um, Accounts payable, page two. Down the other side. The Spyglass Group consulting fee, $4,680. The same group flat project fee, $750, a total of $5,430, if my man is correct. I'd like to know what that's for, and was it approved by the board? And that's my question. All right. So let's we'll wait one more for so that's what we're we'll doing. On well, that, your answer for spyglass, I, we have lots of vendors. I can tell you exactly um, what this is, so I've got to look into it. In fact, I can't even find page two when you're talking about. So, what do we send? Let's send this in to. Uh, okay. What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah, it just says consulting fee for the police department. So, we'll have to take a look into it. Uh, I can give you an answer on that one. And then, uh, for the other one, uh, maybe for your comments. I've taken into consideration and it's worth my stand. All right, next. My name is Jackie Blaze. I've lived in South Village for almost four to six years. I didn't come to the meetings before because I had worked two jobs. I still have a hard time paying my bills. Now I'm paying other people's bills because they are so happy and for you happy. There are three people that have run up the bills for lawyers because they just like to cause trouble. Well, I, for one, speaking for myself, am tired of it. These three people should be made to pay for their own unnecessary lawyer fees and FOIA fees. They are the reason the village has a hard time paying their own bills. I will, I will give you two months, and then I want to know how much Joe Mizzawati, Francine Anderson, and Bernice Brewer have cost the village in non unnecessary personal lawsuits and repetitious FOIAs. This money spent for these 
this money spent from my taxes that could be paying our <coughs> village bills. Sauk Village bills have been lowered a lot within the past four years, but they could be even lowered more if there were not so many of these people pay, running them up. I would also like to know how many businesses did not come to Sauk Village <coughs> because of Joe Wizzle's <coughs> face page. He is not a reporter, and he does not live in, in Sock Village. So why is he allowed to use the Sock Village logo? Thank you. Pat Couch. Uh, this is, I would like to address this to all the candidates that are running for office, if I might. You can this address, you can address it to me. <laughs> okay, to you. But just to take into consideration, anyone that is running for office. This past weekend, on Saturday morning, about 11 a.m., I'm in my pajamas watching TV, and I hear loud voices coming from outside. I open my door, I see two cars, one parked in front of my house, another in the street, a woman with her talking to the individuals in the car. So I stepped out because it was loud, and I thought, you know, first of all, the one car is parked illegally, and the other car, after discussion with this individual, went on down the street. So when I saw the lady going to the neighbor's house, I saw her come back across out of the, the neighbor's house, start down to 21st Street. So I said, excuse me, ma'am. She ignored me. I said, excuse me, ma'am. And again, she avoided me. The third time I said it, I said, excuse me, you're parked illegally. Well, the tirade that I received for trying to help this woman, telling her she's parked illegally, evidently she didn't see the sign, which is just halfway down the, the by my driveway, so she continued to park there and yell at me, cursed at me, told me it's not my effing street. She can park wherever she effing wants to. And I said, but ma'am, there is this, and don't you call me ma'am. I didn't have a clue who this individual was. I don't believe I know who she is, but I did see the shirt she was wearing, which I won't address by name, but you know who I'm talking about. But that, so I feel that that individual, if she's parked illegally, <laughs> She got upset with me because I'm trying to tell her she's parked illegally. She started yelling at me, well, call your police. So I said, okay, fine. I did. The police came, but before they got there, she evidently she started back down the street. She came back and got in her car, rolled down her window, and started obscenities at me again and said, call your effing police because I'm going to back up illegally and go down the street, which she did. So when the police got there, they looked, came over and talked to me, and luckily there were two other witnesses that saw this. The one individual came over and said, what was wrong with that woman? I said, well, she evidently has a problem with me. But that's okay, I don't care. She was breaking the law by where she was parked. I was trying to tell the lady, you're parked illegally, so when your candidates are running for office, tell your workers to look where they're parked, make sure you're legal before you do anything. Thank you, Mr. Burgess.
There were bad times in the 60s when we had a lot of empty houses then. The past few years, though, have been the worst I've seen. The manner in which elected officials have spoken to each other during committee and board meetings borders on slander, and it's certainly inappropriate amongst adults, even more so when there are young people in the audience. Last week, Trustee Tate made a comment at the end of the meeting, and I agree with you 1,000% on what you said. I don't recall what you said verbatim, but it was to the effect that name calling and fighting needs to end now. And I agree with you at least a thousand percent on that. Uh, it's very important that it needs to be done in here amongst adults. But when you're out and about with the village residents, it's probably even more important that there is no name calling threats foul language because you are a village trustee or whatever when you leave this building also. After the election two years ago, I was standing outside the back door of the village hall after a board meeting talking with other senior women. A trustee came out the door and was asked a question by a friend of mine, a very calm and friendly man. This trustee proceeded to swear and cuss at all of us for several minutes. Then as he turned to walk away, he made threats to us and against us. So I am hoping that we will not be subjected to this again in the future, which means I hope Trustee Tate abides by what he said last week and does not ever threaten us again. That's all. Next. Break room 16 to 216, please. Uh, I think we have enough. But I want to say this. Two, on the second Saturday of February, I will be speaking at our church crossroad down Torrance. Every one of you is invited. This subject is who and what is a man. I would like for you all to come. That includes the trustees. No passing out, no political business. That would be not allowed there. But I would like to see you all come there. Second thing is this. Uh, when we stand up here a lot of time and be accusing each other of what we're doing, I asked some people before, when they say about the money and everything, what is missing from up there on that platform that we used to see every night here? And how much money have we saved? What is missing? You don't see the lawyer up there. So the man I went to work and took care of that business. He cut down on the budget that we had. I mean, the different things that you do look to me like trustees, whether you like each other or don't like each other. Don't show it to me. I don't want to see it. When I come to this meeting, I come to hear about the business of the business. I don't want to hear nothing about John Kennedy or nothing like that. But you're coming to the point of where I think when we come to this meeting, we all expect to show that it's not what we're talking about. It's about taking care of the business of the village. Now, things that you do outside that, hey, that's your business. But I still like to close with this, and I would like to see all men, but I still repeat this, there will be no political stuff. This is all about who and what is a man. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, so you know we move to item uh, number three, reports of uh, departments, committees, and commissions. Start with fire department, 911 commission, Chief Stoffer. Thank you, Mayor Board. Over the past few months, the fire department responded to 88 calls. Three ambulance assists, 18 automatic fire alarms, one car fire, one seat all, two dry fires, six gas lights, two vehicle burns, 17 lift assists, two mutual aids out of town, eight ambulance police assists, two small gas, 12 vehicle accidents, one full risk, one still fire and three, and one change of course. On the better half, our new fire truck is in its final stage of being finished. We have about two weeks left 
will be going up on February the 6th for the final inspection. Hopefully, a couple of days after that, we'll be going to our Thank you. Uh, the police department's report, Mr. Kowalski, he's not here tonight. Uh, he's attending a wake in Bloomingdale for a police officer, Raymond Anthony um, Murrell, who passed away in duty. They're having a walkthrough for police officers, so officers uh, across the state are attending that tonight. I will cover a couple things in his report uh, for the board. The village clerk, I'll give her a copy. She'll make copies when you call and have his report. And there's a couple things that are probably on the minds of the residents, and that's uh, the robberies we've had at the uh, U.S. Bank. I'll read his report when it, came, when it comes to that. First one occurred on 12-29, 2016. Uh, at approximately 2 p.m., two black males, subjects both approximately six feet entered the U.S. Bank branch, located on the corner of Torrance Avenue and Sauk Trail. Sauk Village, Illinois, both suspects wore hats and masks and were armed with handguns. The offenders demanded cash from the tellers and vaulted uh, the counters to grab cash from the drawers. Within a short time, they were gone and fled uh, in a waiting vehicle, a silver Chevy Impala. It was heading southbound on Torrance uh, from the area. Officers responded to the scene, canvassed the area with negative results. The FBI was called to assist with the investigation. The vehicle was later found on Side Street of Dyer, Indiana, burned out. The matter is being worked jointly with the FBI. To date, the FBI is following up on several positive leads on this matter. Second one was on 120, 2017. The U.S. Bank, located again on Sauk Trail on Torrance Avenue, was robbed by a uh, male black late 20s. The offender took money and fled the scene on foot. The officer responded, located the subject matching the description in the area of Sauk Trail and Orion. Uh, a show up of the offender was conducted, and a positive ID was made of the offender who was placed into custody. The FBI was called uh, and filed federal bank robbery charges on the offender since this is a federally insured institution. Uh, and if you've seen the articles, there's been articles in the papers uh, concerning this. Uh, I will tell you though that as mayors, uh, we've seen a, a, a increase in bank robbery, especially in 2016, uh, across the whole entire South Suburbs and uh, in the Chicagoland area. So uh, they did catch the one. Uh, the other two are still at large. So um, with that, said there's um, some other information we'll make sure the trustees get, get a copy of his report. All right, move to reports of officers. We've got the mayor's report. I have quite a few things tonight we're going to talk about here. First of all, um, the village board should have received Village board should have received the recommendation from the village attorney for the license agreement to access the grade crossing data and the motor fuel tax forms for IDOT, which IDOT requires the village to approve these forms every year to receive MFT funds. So that's recommendations from uh, Jim Zarnick, the village engineer. Tonight I have Two proclamations. First one we're going to read. First proclamation is a proclamation honoring Ed Paisel for his years of dedication and service to South Village and the Southland. Whereas, as a lifelong resident of the South Suburbs, which included attending Bloom Township High School, Ed was eventually in, um, inducted into the school's Hall of Fame. And whereas, Ed Paisel continues his education. I'm sorry, educational growth with a Bachelor of Science degree, History and Political Science in 1971, and a Master of Arts degree in History in 2000, I'm sorry, 1973, both of which were bestowed upon him by Illinois State University. And whereas, Ed worked as the principal and teacher of the Sauk Village's St. Mark's Lutheran Church for a number of years, and whereas, Ed served one term as Sauk Village trustee before being elected the youngest mayor in Illinois history in 1977 and serving for three terms. And whereas, Ed was instrumental in obtaining funding for the construction of the Sauk Village Community Center and Senior Center. And in the year of 1989, the village of Sauk Village found it fit that, um, that that was the place 
where the community gathers by naming for a person who has done so much for the community and whereas Ed's commitment to Sauk Village residents was evident through his involvement by serving both School District 206 and Community Consolidated School District 168, Sauk Village Chamber of Commerce, Sauk Village Christmas Basket Fund, and Sauk Village Economic Development Committee. And whereas Ed Peso began his tenure as only the second executive director of the South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association in May of 2000. During his term as executive director, Ed was the catalyst for literally tens of millions of dollars in grant funding coming to benefit uh, of member municipalities and their collective 700,000 citizens. And whereas Ed's involvement through the entire Southland community by serving as director of the third airport information clearinghouse, participating in various planning, legislative, and transportation committees and commissions, earned them many well-deserved awards and accolades. And whereas the village of Sauk Village, Crippenwood Counties, will pass a resolution honoring Ed W. Pazel with an honorary street designated, designated on this date, January 24, 2017. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Sauk Village and its residents, thank Ed W. Hazel for his invaluable service for many years, not only to Sauk Village, but to the entire Southland community. Be it further proclaimed that we wish you well on your retirement, and may God bless you as you party on. Proclaim this day the 24th of January, 2017. We will present him with his proclamation uh, at, the, at that event. Ed could not be here tonight. Um, so, uh, just so we know, there were those who will be presented with um, a record of proclamation and everything from the village of at that event. Uh, the second proclamation tonight is the proclamation Sock Village School Choice Week. Whereas all children in the village of Sock Village should have access to the highest quality education possible, and whereas the Village of Sauk Village recognizes the important role that effective education plays in preparing all students in Sauk Village to be successful adults. And whereas quality education is critical, is critically important to the economic vitality of Sauk Village. And whereas the Village of Sauk Village and the surrounding communities are home to a variety of high quality public and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children, in addition to families who educate their children in the home. And whereas educational variety not only helps to divert, diversify, or diversify our community, our economic economy, but also enhances and vibrance of our community. And whereas Sauk Village has many high quality teaching professionals in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children and whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective education, no options. Now therefore I, David Hanks, do hereby recognize January 22nd through the 28th, 2017 as Sauk Village School Choice Week and I call this observance to the attendance of all of our citizens. Next we have... Alright, next thing I have is the collector's report. Now the trustees should have a copy of it for September, October, and November. This will start with September 2016, property taxes, $43,760.51. Other taxes were $294,930.22. Licenses and permits were $9,425. Fees and service were $256,399.69. 
Grants were $116,354.51. Transfers of $10.24. Miscellaneous of $27,013.81. For total revenue for the month of September of $747,893.98. All right, collector's report for October 2016. Property taxes were $1.62. Other taxes were $126,686.37. Licenses and permits were $8,737. Fees and services were $180,335.36. Grants were $16,239.34. Transfers were 34 cents, and miscellaneous was a negative of, negative of $54,664.13. Uh, total revenue for the month of October was $277,335.90. Collector's report for November 2016. Property taxes were $146,457.36. It's a little bit more than October, which is only dollars just to uh, Other taxes were $156,267.38. Licenses and permits were $7,943. Fees and services were $292,501.92. Grants were $21,264.67. There was nothing under transfers. Miscellaneous was $41,027.79. Total revenue for the month of November was $665,462.12. That's collector's reports for September, October, and November. One year ago, Robert asked his mother what he could do to help homeless people. Robert's vision was to feed and clothe the homeless for the winter. Robert's mom, Madonna, started raising money in order to provide homemade food and desserts as well as soft drinks. At first, Robert only had the help of friends and family. Robert now has a GoFundMe page under the name Robert's Feeding the Homeless. Robert and his mom make trips twice a month to the Chicago area, such as 18th Street and Canal, Lower Wacker Drive, and Tent City, which is Wilson and Lawrence Avenue. Madonna is a private duty nurse who uses her hobby of extreme couponing to make sure Robert can fulfill his dream of feeding as many homeless people as possible. Robert is a giving and caring young man, as well as an honor roll student and Boy Scout with Troop 152. Robert puts the needs of others before himself. Robert spent his November birthday hosting a community harvest celebration with the Roberts No Excuse Foundation in the Sock Village Community Center. The entire community was invited to participate. Robert hopes to make this an annual event. Robert is a stellar example of how a young man who not only makes a difference, but also encourages those around him to dream and recruit others to fulfill their dream. I want everybody to please say thank you to Robert. I didn't know Ed back in the day when he was politically uh, involved in the village 
But the last few years, uh, he became a very good friend of my family, and particularly with my husband. And um, I, sometimes I would get daily phone calls from Ed, maybe even three or four times in the same day. Um, Ed was special. He cared a lot about the village. Um, I think the hardest part for Ed when he found out he was sick was that he may or may not be here in this election, and that, that broke his heart. I think sometimes he was more concerned about that than he was his own health. Well, unfortunately, he, fortunately, he was able to move home with his son before he passed. Uh, that was one of his goals. And his wife, who was also sick, were able to move back to California and be with their son. Unfortunately, at the same time, shortly after I understand, his wife Diana also passed. So these are two residents of South Village, and I thought you would keep their families in the prayers. I didn't have enough information to prepare someone you should know, but I know that's two people that I just met within the last few years that became good friends really quickly. Also, I understand someone I never met, but also is near and dear to my heart. Interim clerk Mary Jacobs uh, passed away. I don't know Mary. I, I, was, I didn't have any dealings with her. But um, she stepped in as the interim clerk when Nancy McConaughey passed away while she was in office. Um, again, I don't have enough information. I understand that she was also very dedicated. She was actually working at the uh, front office, and she stepped up and took on the job as the interim clerk. So also, I'd like you to keep the family of Mary Jacobs in your prayers as well. Those are three people that over the holiday season that were near and dear to South Village who unfortunately passed away. There's no meeting next week. Next week is the fifth Tuesday, so we do not meet on the fifth Tuesday unless we have a special meeting. Um, last week the table and the microphone were missing, and this week the table and the microphones are back, so thank God for that. Um, there's ten more weeks till the next election. There's seven more meetings before the next election, and it seems like every, every chance people get, they bring up three things. They bring up the minutes, some people do anyway. An event that happened on Veterans Day that I had no party to, which I'm being blamed for, and the trip to Washington, which I'm not going to use it by the name that a certain person has given it. And I, I just want to point out to everybody that because I don't speak at committee meetings, I thank Trustee Williams for doing her best to defend me, but it doesn't, I don't really need defending. I've said it many times. When minutes are passed out to the board and the department heads on Friday, Saturday, or prior to the meeting, they're draft minutes. There are minutes that are prepared in draft form. I will start from now on making sure that the watermark is imposed on the minutes so they know what's the draft of the minutes and what's the final minutes. Just like I give the department heads and the board an opportunity to read the draft minutes to see if there's any changes to be made, I do the same. I proofread the minutes before they become final. Normally, when there's a typo or an incomplete sentence, as was pointed out last week, that is corrected when the draft set of minutes is preferred. Before those minutes are placed in the file, which is a permanent file, they are corrected. What I don't understand is how people who have been elected to serve the residents would rather spoke no for the minutes rather than point out what the deficiencies in the minutes are. The minutes are one of my primary jobs, and I do take a lot of time to do the minutes, and I take a lot of pride in the minutes, and I think it says more about the person who refuses to speak to me and refuses to take my phone calls and my emails and does not tell me when there's a situation that should be corrected before the minutes are put in a permanent record. These minutes are kept on file for 100 years. I won't be here to see it, but if anybody ever wants to know what happens, it should be right. Also, there was a challenge. Uh, my petitions were challenged. I, I have, I've been hesitant to say anything because while it was in litigation, which we're not supposed to speak about things while they're in litigation. I was hesitant to say anything. Someone got out to the microphone earlier today and talked about frivolous lawsuits. This is just another case of a frivolous lawsuit. My petitions were challenged because they stated that I, I owe money from the trip that I took to Washington where I fundraised from our, a, a vendor or two. It is clearly not, the money was clearly not, the check was clearly not made out to the Village of Soft Village. That check was made out to Debbie Williams. I don't owe that money to the Village of Soft Village. But the person who wanted to find me as unqualified to be clerk decided to challenge my petitions based on the fact that I owe the Village money. Two out of three people on the electoral board, Mayor Hanks and Trustee Williams, uh, denied that allegation. Trustee Burgess found me guilty on that allegation. The other allegation was that I notarized my own signature on a petition 
and they wanted to valid invalidate all my petitions where I had notarized them. The law is, I was not validating my signature, I was notarizing, I'm sorry. I was notarizing the signature of the person who circulated the petition. Again, frivolous objection, and two out of three electoral board members denied that objection. Again, Mayor Hanks and Trustee Williams Bay. Trustee Burgess found me guilty, even though the attorneys said what the law clearly stated. The third thing that the person, Frank T. Anderson, objected to my petitions was that my name, Debbie, was also included on my petitions. This is the third time I'm running for office, and every time I've run for office, my name has been Deborah Debbie Williams on the ballot. And thankfully, because the challenge was overturned, I will be on the ballot. The challenge is over, and I am officially a candidate in the next election. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, we have to I will find the board, please. First of all, we've got the uh, senior beautification committee. I'll raise the beautification committee first. There will be no beautification uh, committee meeting in January 2017. The holiday decorations have been packed away in an ordinary fa uh, fashion. And the committee is always looking for additional members and or financial support to keep programs alive and thriving. Thank you to all those who assisted the committee and cheered, cheered them on. That's the beautification committee. Um, the, uh, this is the senior committee. Uh, don't push your luck. Medicare fraud can happen to anybody. There's a fraud prevention fair for seniors, which is sponsored by South Suburban Senior Services of Catholic Charities and the Illinois Senior Medicare Patrol Program at Age Options. And it will be held on Friday, March 17th from 10 to noon. Uh, it's being held in Cayman City at 1700 Memorial Drive. Uh, it talks about play fraud bingo, uh, learn useful tips to prevent uh, detect and report Medicare fraud, get information on fraud from a variety of consumer protection agencies, uh, bring your old Medicare summary notice or other personal documents to be shredded, and secure drop boxes will be on site. Again, this is March the 17th, 2017. You get that on the viewer. Um, and let's see here, we've got age options and inviting seniors to 2017 uh, Leslie uh, Breakfast. And let's see here, there's multiple locations. I'll have let me put this out. Uh, January, let's see, uh, January 27th is the next one, February 1st, February 6th, and February 10th. Uh, multiple locations, first one, 27th in Southern Kansas City, that's, uh, I think it's this Friday. Uh, the first is in uh, Northfield. The 6th is in Burbank, and the 17th is in Elk Grove. Um, so I'll give that to you and get that posted. And, yeah. That's it, move to Parks and Recs Committee, Trustee Jones. February 2nd will be the Parks and Recs Committee meeting, um, 7 o'clock here in the Village Hall. Um, this Saturday, from 11 to 2.30, will be open gym. So um, all kids are welcome. Under the age of nine, should be accompanied by an, an adult. Uh, we're working, some of the things we're working on in the committee are the um, spring dance. Um, we should be having a glow party. Um, this will be from for the ages, the school ages of um, six, seven, and eighth graders. Uh, we're still working out some of the details. Um, there will be flyers passed out. And we're also working on some details for summer camp. And that goes my report. Thank you, Trustee. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Time C, Public Works, Trustee Burgess. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a question last week that was asked uh, to the mayor about uh, certain things with the uh, public works, and I contacted uh, uh, Mr. Weller and uh, found out the following items. First of all, branch pickup. Uh, I talked to him, and he said the branch pickup will be starting in late April, early May of this year. The dates he hasn't he hasn't finalized, but 
you could look for it to happen at that time. Uh, and the second, uh, it was someone in Lincoln Meadows and asked about the storm sewer in Lincoln Meadows. I was, I spoke wrong. Um, it's not filled with asphalt, it's filled with gravel right now. And uh, as soon as the concrete uh, uh, factory is opened, they will be purchasing concrete to finalize that fill in uh, Lincoln Meadows. And also, the lights at the beginning of Lincoln Meadows right there as you come in, they're still pulling wire. They have to pull wire, I guess, from one place to another, and it's going to take a little time. And they're going to coordinate that because I think there's some other things involved um, that they have to do. But that's why the light is still out, in case anyone knows or anyone has any questions about it. That's why the light up at the entranceway of Lincoln Meadows is still out, but they're working on that. And um, that concludes my report. Hey, Trustee, for following up on that, those answers. Move to Housing Mayor Government Committee, Trustee Gates. The, there's a housing workshop scheduled for March 23rd. We have not confirmed it, uh, but it is scheduled. I've spoken with the individuals that's going to do the workshop, so possibly uh, we can go through with that. Uh, and part of Intergovernmental, I received information from a trustee in one of our surrounding communities who provided information that he's used uh, for the housing project in his community. So I would like him to come and speak to us, uh, the people that are present, give us ideas of what we can do regarding reducing our housing uh, situation. And we had, I think I recall, two individuals that did buy homes in South Village. Uh, that's a small number. If you just say two, uh, that's a major number. If we talk about there were only 15 or 20 people there uh, that came to this workshop. So for March 23rd, there's a possibility, uh, a good possibility, we're gonna have a, a, another workshop and we'll have a guest speaker there who'll be a trustee in another com community who's gonna give us some ideas and direction on what we should do to reduce our housing vacancy. That is my report. Thank you, Trustee. Public Safety and Orange Review Committee, Trustee Myers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple items tonight. Uh, first off, uh, I'm going to need to call for a meeting for my subcommittee for February 2nd, 7 p.m. here at the Village Hall. Uh, then the uh, following committee night, I would like to be placed on the agenda to speak to the, uh, the board. And then the other item that uh, several months ago, the dangerous animal uh, section of our uh, animal control ordinance was a, a challenge and it was put to us to, to look it over and, and do some changes. I brought it back to the board a couple of times. The last time I brought it back, they asked for uh, a, a full review and see what complies with state, county, and so forth. I finally, I finally got everything back from the county, got everything from Dr. Alexander, got everything back from the state, and uh, we looked over ours. The chief police uh, has made changes. After I review this with my committee, I will give a copy in case the board I have no problem giving you a copy tomorrow. I'll make it up give you, give you look at it over. It's it almost mirrors the uh, county and state. And some other we had to uh, get out there and uh, we do have uh, some animals uh, running around there that's pretty mean. And it uh, does spell it out point blank what an officer can do uh, and if a uh, president, uh, president can do if a bitten and if an animal is declared to be a vicious animal, it spells out pretty clear. I, I must say that this is a pretty good document, and I will uh, present this to the subcommittee and then to, to the board. If you guys like to have a copy tomorrow, I'll put it all in your box. It's not going to change. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Move to neighborhood watch 
Committee Trustee Linda Washington House. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to remind everyone, as usual, we will have our next Neighborhood Watch meeting on the second Monday of February, which will be February the 13th at 7 o'clock at the fire station. Um, the Neighborhood Watch Committee is very excited about our next event that's coming up, and it's going to be on Friday, March the 10th at Rick Over School at 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. The doors are open at 5.30. You don't want to miss this. The flyers are in the back already asking for donations or anyone that want to participate on the program. I put it out because a lot of residents will, uh, have shared with me that they do know people that like to come to these type of events or they may want to sponsor in some kind of way. Our thing is unity in the community. And I think that our committee came up with a great thing. We do need unity in the community. Unfortunately, there are people that bask in people's misfortune. If they are people, whether they're your neighbor or whoever they may be, that people can find out that you could be going through something and they bask in that. Oftentimes, these people are even labeled as Christians that laugh at things that you're going through or hardships that people may be facing, whether it's racial, with the last presidential election, there's a lot of racism throughout the entire country. As you see on the news, there are villages, there are cities, there are different states that are having mass protests. So we want to bring unity in Salt Village. Basically, we have reached out to the schools. They're all participating. We've reached out to the local churches, the ministers. They all have an opportunity to submit uh, to me in the committee, either my co-chair, uh, trustee might they want to have their choir or praise dancers or whatever they do in their churches. We want to highlight Salt Village, and we do have a talent outside of Salt Village that's coming as well. We're excited about having Stella Award winner Daryl King from WYCA. She's excited to come to Salt Village. If you don't listen to her on the radio, she is a delight to hear. So I just want to encourage everyone to let your neighbors know about the concert. It's free to the community. There's no charge, and we are looking forward to having an absolutely fabulous evening with Willie the Entertainer, who does a fantastic job of an impersonation of Michael Jackson. He's been on The Ellen Show. He's been on Good Morning America, Wendy City Live. He's been on so much. He's only like a fifth grader, but he is phenomenal. When we brought him last time, we did the play. The children loved him, and he signed autographs and took pictures, so we were able to uh, secure him to come back. And when we announced it at the school board meeting last night, the school board members were glad to know that we were able to get him back, and they're also looking forward to meeting and greeting Daryl King. So I just wanted to invite all of you, especially those that are videotaping and going to put it up on YouTube, to come to Salt Village. We're doing some great things out here in Salt Village. We are promoting unity in our community, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee. Move to IMG Budget, Finance, and Community Relations Committee, Trustee Rosie Williams Bay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of things. Number one, Based on this cast question, I did reach out to the fire, or, I'm sorry, the police chief and the finance director about your question. I haven't heard back from them yet, but as soon as you said that, I didn't have them all. So if I had an answer by the meeting, I'll let you know. Um, also, there was a meeting yesterday um, with Bloom Trail regarding the Student Government Day and the Village Sticker Program. And they are extremely excited to work with us. So I'm happy to say that for the 60th anniversary, we will have a Student Government Day. Um, we have left the criteria of how they pick the students completely up to them, but it was agreed by both parties that, that we should focus on ninth grade Salt Village students, which was great for, for us that they agreed to that because that means the students who actually were not able to participate in Student Government Day because of all the hoopla last year will now have the opportunity to participate this year. So that's really great. And then the art, club, the art teachers are very excited to work on the Village Sticker Program. So that was really great to hear from yesterday. Um, also, the soft talks are on the back table. I know the village clerk made an announcement before the meeting, but in case everybody walked in, the newest soft talk is on the back table. The Budget and Finance Committee has met this month, and we spoke about the third quarter, and it's our request that the finance director be present at a committee meeting to go over the numbers, the actuals with the board. And to that note, I understand that at the um, town hall meeting that Trustee Burgess had, there was a question that was brought up about the Budget and Finance Committee meetings and stating that they should be open to the public and why are they not open to the public. 
and are there minutes taken and things of that nature. And unfortunately, the person who I understand asked the question is not here. So I guess I will have to reach out to her personally to give her this answer. But just for anybody who is a part of the meeting or anybody who would like to know this answer, this answer should have been said at the meeting, but all committees that are held by a trustee in any capacity have to be, if it's, a, if it's a sanctioned committee, it has to be an open meeting, which means there needs to be an agenda posted at least 48 hours before the meeting, and it has to be an open meeting, okay? So it has to say, the agenda has to say the time, the date, and what's on the agenda, and anybody is available to come, anybody is able to come to that meeting. So we do post our agendas, we, they are posted properly within the time period, the meetings are here. They do vary in date and time. Part of that is because you know some committees have them like every third Thursday or however that works. Ours vary in date and time based on the content that we're talking about. I know you guys have heard me with my reports before. Sometimes the finance director isn't able to get us like the aging report. If that's on our agenda, we might have to move the meeting back. Something like that. Sometimes we have the finance director there, sometimes he's not available. So it, it all depends upon people's schedule. But once we are committed to a date and time, it is posted and anybody is available to attend. And I think there was a question about minutes. And yes, minutes are taken as minutes should be taken at every committee meeting. And that being said, I'm sure it'll be planned, in which case I welcome that. <laughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Trustee. Trustee Williams. Um, did you look at all of the tape that was there? Because when I explained to the person that asked that question, I told them that your meetings generally are during the day and the afternoon, and everyone is everyone is invited. I never said that it was a closed meeting or, it, or there could not be any participation. I did state that there's an agenda, and uh, but I did tell them that usually your meetings, which I do see a lot of times, are during the day, one or two in the afternoon. So. Uh, as far as stating something different, as far as me commenting that there weren't any minutes taken, that, I never said that there weren't any minutes. I did say that there was an agenda, and I did say that it was held during the day, and they would have to come up here to find out when it, because I don't know when the meetings are, because like you just stated, that it sometimes is this afternoon, or I think there's different times and dates that you may have, but they can come up here and find out at the village hall. So that's, that's what I stated. And uh, the person, I guess they just wanted to know, uh, was it an open meeting, and can anyone attend? I told them yes. I, I'm sorry if I misspoke, but I didn't say that you had, you had made those comments. I said that a resident had asked the questions if there was an open meeting, and if there were minutes conducted, and if residents could come and see. And I didn't look at the tape. I don't, I don't look at the tape of town hall meetings. I don't look at the meetings. But I was informed during the meeting, I was informed that somebody had a question, and I did try to tell that person who was in here to tell that person that answer then during the meeting and I understand that that wasn't necessarily conveyed in public. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that anybody who had any questions or anything, yes, there's minutes, it's open, there's an agenda, anybody's able to attend and we, we do discuss everything. Everything that we do discuss, the other thing that I guess was brought up, everything we discuss that needs to have any action on it, we don't take any action by ourselves. We present that to the board, like you see, like budget finance policy, anything like that. That's presented to the board. And like I said, we, last time we spoke, our last topic of discussion was the third quarter budget, and it's our recommendation that the finance director does come and explain the actions to the board. So that this is our request for that. All right. Thank you. Move to new business. That's for a motion to approve all accounts payables and disbursements from December 14, 2016 through January 24, 2017, according to Sockler's policies. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. And a motion is there a second? Second. And a motion is there a second? Question. Trustee. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I tried to, I was here um, to try to find out when, uh, Monday, and I couldn't find a couple of answers because the people involved weren't here, but I do. And I see Mr. Fairman's not here. I don't know who can answer this question, but I wanted to know, um, first of all, how much of the water fund money went into this accounts payable? How much did we take out of the water fund to complete this accounts payable? I was trying to find that out. I couldn't, no one could answer that question. Um, secondly, 
I saw where it says immediate checks. What is, what a, okay, so I'm sure as a manager pays or retirement. What does that mean? I mean, is, are, we, are we purchasing something for $500? Are we donating $500? Is there a lunch in there? We're buying tickets for $500, which, can anybody answer that? I can answer that one. Okay. Uh, mayor's managers are putting on a retirement and they've asked all communities to get $500 to help pay for that. So, are we, are you, are who, who's going to the retirement party? I will be there. So, how many people does, are, are going from know. from your board or from yourself? I don't know, I can find out. No, I'm talking about if anyone else wants to go, do they have to pay or is it included in that? I can find out. I don't know. I, I got the invite as a mayor to attend. I can, I, you know, I, really? everybody's invited. It's free. That's why the, I'm sorry. the municipalities are actually chipping in not only on uh, the dinner, but on his gift. And it's open to anybody. I'm surprised you as a trustee didn't get an, uh, an email. I don't know how they invited people. But um, I know that if you call South Suburban Mayors and Managers, you better do it quickly, because I think his dinner's like the first week of February. But um, that's why we prepared the proclamation tonight. There's gonna be a book of proclamations from all the neighboring towns, and what you also see later in the agenda, the street sign that we're gonna be honoring him with. Everybody's doing something different, but um, I wasn't in charge of inviting people, but I will tell you, you may still be able to get an RSVP in if you call South Spring. When did, you, when did you guys find out about this? I mean, when was the village notified that there was a dinner and whatever? I mean, I see we paid the 500, but when was it notified that we could have been able to be there so we, if we wanted to be? Because like you just stated, it's next week or probably week after, and it's probably, if it's gonna be at South Spring, mayors and managers on 174th Street, there's limited space, so I was just wondering when the village found out that they could inform the trustees that if they wanted to attend. That was never conveyed for us to, to invite anybody. It is up to the South Suburban Mayors and Managers to invite people to their event. I was informed when I was asked to provide a proclamation or a resolution to be inserted in the booklet. I, so that's the, all I have on that subject. I received an email along with probably the other 70 some mayors inviting the mayors. So, okay, basically what I'm saying is, yes, you got invited, but I'm just wondering when, now that you're saying that everyone's invited, they can come, but... Well, the, the village clerk said that? I, I don't know for just sure. Just now? I know she just said so. What I said, what, what, I don't want anybody to think that everybody in the audience is invited to Ed Pace's no, retirement party. No, I'm talking about I am not officials. responsible for inviting anyone to, the, to this party. South Suburban Mayors and Managers, their phone number's on the website. I'd be happy to give it to the board members. Anybody is entitled to call and find out about this event. Please, I don't want it to get out that I told everybody they can go to Ed Pace's event. No. Sure, the seats are limited, and from what I understand, the reservations need to be made by January 30th. But again, Trustee Burgess, if you would like to attend, I'm sure if you call South Suburban Mayors and Managers, first thing tomorrow, they'll find a way to okay, There is no cost to the people right. to participate because the municipalities and other organizations that Ed Paisel, because he was involved in a lot of organizations, are all contributing toward his farewell and his gift. So no, I'm just I'm saying, for you to put fight. this out here, I'm sure you knew at least a week ahead of, ahead of time, and you could somebody could have mentioned it last week. My, it's not, I'm not the person. Or no, the no, person I, I'm, not, I'm not going people. back and forth. I just asked a question. And the last question, Mayor, and I don't know who, who's supposed to answer this one. I've been asking this for over a month. And um, as far as the breakdown for the levy that we levy, how do we determine how much money goes to whatever department it goes to? And that's something that I was just wondering. Um, I still haven't, let's go back to the first one. Does anyone here know how much money um, that we took out of the water fund? And if we did, who voted on that? As far as taking it out, who voted on that? Because it had to be, it should be somebody to vote on that. And when was that vote taken? Was it consensus? Because there was no, we didn't have a board meeting, but I'm sure we took money out of the water fund to pay these accounts payable. We just didn't come up with these numbers. And we didn't have this much money in our coffers. So it had to come out of the water fund. So again, how much money was it and who voted to extract?
extract that kind of money from the ones. Well, I'm sure if any money was paying out worth how much I can't give the exact amount, I don't know. Um, There's trustees, anybody here, though. Trustees would have been contacted and asked for permission, so. So that's what I'm asking. Was there any money taken out of the water fund to pay this council bill? I'm sure, I'm sure there was. Yes. The only thing I know for certain, and this is something that we've stated in the past, is when you look at the front page and it says um, the admin retro pay, it was already explained to us that that would be about fifty thousand dollars, and that that would be taken out of the water fund for the um, December twenty second payroll. That's the only thing that I know for certain. As far as any other payroll. Right, and now I, I did find that out. That's why I didn't I didn't say the retro pay. I was talking about counts payable. The retro pay we talked about that from the public works and administration and from the police. I did ask the mayor that at that time, would that come out of the water fund? And he said yes. I'm talking about everything minus that seven hundred seventeen thousand. I know we didn't have that in our general fund, so I just I'm asking how much of the minus the retro pay. The rest of it, of the payroll, and a regular accounts payable came out. How much did we have to extract from the waterfront to make these payments? Because I mean, we're getting ready to vote on something. I would like to know where the money came from. I'm not going to vote to to pay something. I don't know where the money came from. It could have came out of the county we're not even supposed to touch. So I just wanted to find out how much of the waterfront. I didn't say we're not supposed to touch, but it would be nice to have something for a record to state that at this particular time that we took X amount of money out of the waterfront and keep a, uh, keep a running total how much we do owe the waterfront, maybe one day, who knows, but at least we can have a running total how much money we took out to, to, to make our obligations with the um, accounts payable. So to vote on something that I don't know where the money came from, I know you've asked a lot of questions, Madam Clerk asked questions about if you vote no on something, you have a reason. I do have a reason. I want to know how much money we took out to make this happen. And if we did take money out of the water fund, who authorized that? We did talk about the retro pay, but the rest of it, who authorized that money to be taken out of the water fund? Because we should, as our uh, accountants told us, when we take money out of the water fund, it should be documented by a vote of who voted yes or no. But it's something that you can go back on and say, okay, they took this out, these trustees voted on it, and that's it. I just, first of all, you should have got a cash account balance sheet, which tells you exactly where the money came from. If you look at it, that yes, is I do. I, yeah, $308,642.82 equals the January 24 payout of $308,642.82. Okay. And then, again, this is for two accounts payable. So you would add the same thing for the last accounts payable. Okay, but it's, I, 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 it's right here. Water fund, uh, how much we have in the water fund. Does it say at the bottom says accounts payable being paid, and the water fund is set with $49,400. Okay. So all we took out from the, from the water fund was $49,000 to pay $700,000? It's all funds. It's your general fund. It had 52000 waste manager, 52000 I right. spelled it right up. Okay, so that, that's the question I asked. <laughs> so you're saying that we, we took a water, water sewer, which is a water fund, $60,000, 67000 Okay. So the rest of this money out of that, we, then that was, that's basically the, um, that was the uh, retro pay, it was about 67. So the rest of this money came out of general fund, which if I look at this, I don't see it adding up. The, the payroll, okay. So if you look under account payable, it says the payroll of 717,000, that's broken down by all those different months of or all those different payroll weeks. That's something different. Okay, the only thing I can speak is to the retro pay that Mohawk stated was about $50,000 
Yes. No, it was six and seven. He said it was six and seven. Okay. So that's that's the only thing I know for certain from the waterfront and that we deal with the seven hundred and seventeen thousand. To ask what happened with the rest of the accounts payable, that three hundred and eight thousand dollars, that's what this breakdown is for. That she see at the bottom of the account. That was the accounts payable, yes. Right. Okay. But I'm asking, when you add the use, okay. We, I'm just going with payroll. I'm not even, I haven't even started with the accounts payable. I'm going with payroll. Payroll for these last times since we have, since there's been a meeting, that's back in uh, fe, uh, December. Since that time, we've had two, three payrolls. We've had three payrolls. They tally, and I'm not talking about the retro pay, I'm talking about the payroll. They tallied some 500 and some thousand, almost $600,000. Where did we get this money from and how much did we take out of our waterfront? That's simple, that's all I wanted to know. Because we, you're asking to have something to be uh, just taken out. You vote, we're voting right now to pay, pay, to pay this right here. I just want to know, it's paid, payroll is paid, I understand that. We can't take it back. I just want to know where we got the money. That was, that's the easiest question. Where and how much of this payroll did we take and use from the waterfront? That's all I'm asking. I'm not questioning whether or not we're going to pay it. It's paid. Okay, I'm not going to ask the checks back. I just want to know what we used to pay this and who authorized to extract the money from the waterfront. I just, that's all I ask. Well, you've got normal payroll. We make normal payroll based off where we're getting. We talked about the retro pay for public works administrator. You know, administration and retropay for police officers that came up to be approximately 200 and um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 200, about 250,000 dollars of that 717 dollars or 17,000 dollars. We know for sure that money came out of waterfront, which we talked about. The retropay would be paid out of waterfront. Wait a minute, Mayor. Wait a minute. Not, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm now you confused me. You said 200. First, it was. Uh, six to seven thousand dollars of retro pay coming from the uh, raises. Now you're telling me two hundred thousand is coming from retro pay? Between two departments. Three departments. Retro, retro pay or regular payroll? If you look at it, it says payroll includes payroll, uh, public works and administration retro pay. Retro pay. Right. That's 183,667. 183. Okay. And then you had police department, which was. $69,837. You sure you're not getting mixed up when he says around $67,000? You weren't just talking we, about the police That's what we were told at the time when we were asked about that, how much would the retro pay cost the village? And it was told to us $67,000. For the police department? So no, from, from the police, the public works, and the um, um, uh, administration front office. The retro pay was that amount. That's what we were told. Now, payroll, that's different. I just wanted to know where did we come up with the money for payroll? Retro pay, I understand that. Where is this money that we took out for payroll? Where did we get that? We didn't have that in, the, in our, in our uh, budget unless we took it out. Only one that had it in the budget that we had money in the budget like that was the water sewer fund. You're and the financial I understand your question. You've said it multiple times. Okay. Okay, so when you look at payroll, you have payroll that comes from the fire department, which is the fire fund. You've got payroll that comes from the water department and sewage, which comes from the water fund. You've got payroll that pays for administration, makes, makes your pay as trustees. It pays for our police department. It makes your pay too. No, that's right. It makes everybody so it pays, for, pays for all of our pay. So you guys falls under administration. You know, you've got your police department, so on and so on. Uh, I think as the falls under uh, homeland security, falls under general fund. So again, I don't have the answer. I know you've, you've asked this question more than three times, you continue to ask. I don't have an answer for you. I just say this, this we have before these accounts payable, this is what we're paying. But you're asking us to vote on something that we pull out of the sky. I, I just, before I vote on something, I want to know where the money's coming, where it came from. It's not coming, it's paid. Where did it come from? That's all I want to know. Okay. And that was it. All Thank right. you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, here you go. I got well, questions. Yes, Trustee Jones. Um, during the break, well, on about the December 22nd, um, there was a consensus, and I was looking for, um, I asked Mohan for a voting record. 
There's no vote. Uh, consensus well, a consensus is where we should have some type of record who gave their approval to spend money. Can you like pay, make payroll things yes. like that? Okay. And and I just never I never received it and I asked numerous times. Okay. Well, for that it's around the December twenty second time frame? Well anytime we have any consensus. Yeah. In the records. Usually when there's no meetings, if we need to make payroll, Mohan's sending out Mohan's very good at keeping notes. So as trustee I, I, I asked him it, yeah, I didn't get it. So I'll, I'll find out. But I know he's very good at it because especially when it came to this one. I would not approve payroll until we had consensus for the board. So, because I didn't want anyone to say we're making payroll. I think if you, if you, you might have gave me your consensus to make that one. If we have consensus, you had to have somebody's name there. You had to just say, you had to ask somebody, okay, fine. If you ask me, okay, if I'm one of them, then put that down. Right. Whoever the other two or three trustees that gave the consensus, it should be duly noted. That's a matter of public record. <laughs> Even though it was a consensus, it was a matter of public record. Who gave the consensus to extract this money from that account? Basically what I'm trying to ask. Who gave the consensus or the okay to, it's not a matter, it's, it's very plain. Who gave the consensus to spend this kind of money and to pay these payments? I know that they're supposed to be paid. I just want to know where they came from and who gave it before I vote on something. I want to be perfectly clear with that. Before I vote on something, I'd like to know where the money came from and who voted to take that money from that, that particular account. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, those please call Purchase? No. Jones? No. Myers? Yes. Bates? No. Washington House? Yes. That's for a motion to approve board meeting minutes for December 13, 2016. Is there a motion to approve? So yeah, motion is there a second? Second. Yeah, motion is second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, those correct, please follow. Jones? Yes. Byers? Yes. Tates? No. Washington House? Yes. Williams Bank? Yes. And Trustee Burks? Yes. Motion carries. I see motion to approve committee meeting minutes for January 17, 2017. Is there a motion to approve? And motion is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Coach Kirk, please call the vote. Myers? Yes. Tates? No. Washington House? Yes. Williams Bank? Yes. Bridges? No. Jones? Yes. Motion carries. Item D, motion to approve license agreement for access to grade crossing data from CN Railroad. Is there a motion to approve? Comments. Got a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, motion to second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Coach Crook, please call roll. Yes. Washington House? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Item E, motion to approve BLR 14230 resolution for maintenance of streets and highways by the municipality under the Illinois Highway Code. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Got yeah, a motion to third, second. Second. Yeah, motion to second. Any questions or comments? Are you going to go to Kirk, please call the vote? Washington House? Yes. Williams Bank? Yes. Purchase? Yes. Jones? Yes. Myers? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Item F. Motion to approve BLR 09111 <coughs> resolution for improvements by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. And motion is there a second? Second. And motion is second. Any questions or comments? Are you going to go to Kirk, please call the vote? Yes. Jones? Yes. Myers? Yes. Tates? Yes. Washington House? Yes. Motion carries. Item G, motion to approve BLR 14231, municipal estimate of maintenance costs. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Yeah, motion is there a second. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, please call roll. Purchase? Yes. Jones? Yes. Myers? Yes. Tates? Yes. Washington House? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Item H, motion to approve BLR 05512 preliminary construction engineering service agreement for motor fuel tax funds. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
Got a motion, is there a second? Got a motion and a second, any questions or comments? Hearing none, coach, please call roll. Jones? Yes. Myers? Yes. Davis? Yes. Washington House? Yes. Williams Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Item I, motion to approve resolution of the Village of Swag Village Cook in Well County is honoring Edward W. Hazel with an honorary street designation. Is there a motion to approve? So Got a motion, is there a second? Second. Got a motion, a second. Any questions or comments? Question. Trustee Washington. Could that be a, uh, how many charges do you have to serve to get a bullet signed? Uh, Trustee Washington. Uh, well, I think, he's, I think he's served enough. No, yeah. I'm just asking. No, um, there's no actual policy, but the practice has been agreed. So if you serve for three terms, you get a sign? Yes. Okay. He served for a total of four, if you count him being a trustee okay. also. He was a trustee for one term and a mayor for three. Okay. I don't know how many have to be all right, any other questions? Hearing none, vote for Keith Carroll. Fires? Yes. Tates? Yes. Washington House? Yes. Williams Bay? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Jones? No. The motion carries. Item J, motion to approve the sale or disposition of surplus property, miscellaneous order vehicles. Is your motion to approve? So moved. Got a motion, is there a second? Okay, motion to second. Any questions or comments? Question. Trustee Gates. Uh, as I stated earlier, I provided the chief with information uh, concerning disposable vehicles, and you indicated that this is an auction. The company that I gave to him assessed the vehicles, and they buy the vehicles. So it's not an auction with this company that I, I gave him. So I respectfully do not uh, agree with this format of having an auction instead of just being able to receive a flat uh, agreed upon rate. All right, thank you, Trustee. Any other questions or comments? Question. Trustee Jones. Um, from the revenue generated from the sales, um, is this money earmarked for specifics or I mean, what are we supposed to do with it? Well, there's a mental spot that we're going to spend and pay that. <laughs> um, I don't know what it costs. Yeah, usually it's about general fund. I mean, if these start falls under general funds, so they're police vehicles. So it's more likely it's going to go to the general fund. Police cars were bought through the general fund. Which is, yeah. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, vote sure. Please call roll. No. Washington House? Yes. Williams Bay? Yes. Jones? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Jones? Yes. Myers? Yes. Thank you. Please forget it, Motion carries. Item 7. Miscellaneous comments from the Mayor and Board of Trustees. Start with the trustees. Be 
be safe. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there are key, the, some of the employees at the bank are Saudi village residents. And so they would be able to sign that too. So this is something that we talked about. We thought it might help. I mean, you know, corporate is corporate, they make their own decisions. But I thought this was something that if it's coming from a bunch of residents, it might make them change their mind. So I just wanted to let the board and the residents know that that's something that I'm working on with the bank. And lastly, at last week's meeting, there was a couple comments that were made by Trustee Tates, and um, him and I had maybe a difference of opinion on what happened with him. And so he asked me to provide that proof, and I, I have that proof. I spent the last week going through two years of minutes um, to find the exact dates and times for those things. Um, first of all, regarding never making any comments about the deficiencies in the audit. <coughs> I would refer trustee students to the, minute, to the minutes of March 8, 2016, um, April 5, 2016, and April 12th. All three of those minutes, all three of those dates and times you did talk about the deficiencies in the audit. Um, probably most concerning is the comment made that there was never any comment by trustee Tate in any derogatory fashion about student government day. And I want to just state, looking at the minutes, and I do have a copy of the minutes here for anybody who would like to see them, for the January 19th meeting, Trustee Tate's trustee uh, agreed with Trustee Myers who stated that 14% of eighth graders can't read. That was the report that they received from their intergovernmental meeting, and that was the comment. I mentioned that we had found many errors in the judgment essays throughout the years, and that we had reached out to the school board to help us judge those essays so that they could see firsthand where the problem was. And I had asked Trustee Tate at that time, since he was working with the Intergovernmental, intergovernmental Committee, that this may be an area to be addressed. He stated at that time that that was not something that he was going to pursue, but that having this program is putting the, the students at a disadvantage because we are putting them on display for them to not be able to read. He did say at that time that he wasn't their parent, but that he was embarrassed, and he was embarrassed for them. Those comments were then taken to the school board and falsely stated that I said those things. I never once said that I was embarrassed about the student. I never said the student couldn't read, and I never said that we shouldn't put them on display. So those are the derogatory comments. Again, I have the minutes for anybody who would like to see them, the hand motions in the audience, and if that means you want to read them, they're right here. And I also, for anybody, I know that there's been talk about the minutes are false and the minutes aren't exact. So for anybody who has any question about it, I have it on recording right here from the video. So anybody can come and listen to it. It's about a minute long, a minute and 11 seconds. I have no problem playing it right now if anybody wants to hear it. No. But if anybody wants it, it's right on my phone, and you can hear the words of her makeup. So, again, maybe we should re look at the thing about the word never and saying that we don't do things. And I hear, you know, liar, liar, and God, it. again, if you'd like to listen to what we say, that's the go. It's right here. That's all I said. Hey, Trustee, Trustee Marsh. I have just uh, one question, and uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to ask it to the Director of uh, Homeland Security. On uh, page four, uh, no, I'll take that back, page three, just for my last time. Uh, we installed a brand new siren. Could you enlighten us where we installed the siren at? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It says right there we paid 17, uh, 1700 dollars for a brand new siren. Okay, supposedly it was uh, installed at Windpack, of course, back. Oh, it's over by Windpack area? Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you excited? Yes. Trustee Hayes. Uh, I have a comment. Hey, Trustee. Uh, Trustee Johnson. Oh, once again, um, open gym this Saturday <laughs> from 11 to 2 30. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Trustee Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just again, 
<coughs> about the concert coming up on March the 10th. If you want to know the date, the flyers are in the back. When the flyers are coming, it's just a letter in the back giving information about the concert. Again, like I said, we are very excited about it. If you all want to be on it, we're only taking so many um, acts on the, the program because we don't want it to be too long. So if you're interested, you need to let us know as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Trustee Burgess. Yes, Mayor. I just wanted to um, ask you for the record, when can I expect to find out about what we asked about uh, as far as the money? Because that's what we're here for as far as trustees to make sure that the money is spent and make sure that we have a record of how it was spent. Can we go back and you know to find out that we don't have this amount of money in the water fund due to whatever, that's how we can find out. If we don't document it, then we right where we at right now don't know where it came from and how all of a sudden it's gone. So I would like to find out from you, Mayor. I see Mr. Fairman's not here. So I because if I ask him, he's gonna say ask the mayor and then the mayor's gotta direct me. So could is it is it possible that you can direct him to direct Mr. Uh, Mohan to find out where, how much money was taken out of the water fund, and um, um, the percentage for the, the payment, and also who voted or who gave consent to <coughs> that amount of money being taken out of the water fund to pay accounts paid. Somebody who voted, but were, were the consents? Consents. When you, when you make a consent, you all vote. No, you may have consensus to record. So. Okay, well, who gave their consent to withdraw that kind of money out of the water fund? If it was taken out of the water fund, I don't know. But if it was taken out of the water fund, who gave their consent to have that done? Right. Thank you. Trustee Burgess, I forgot to mention this on report. I did email that question to Mohan. I just forwarded you a copy of the email. To your personal emails, I know you don't use your village email, so you should be able to do that. You, for what, what, what the how much? When you asked when you asked that question, I emailed Mohan uh -huh. and I asked him for a breakdown of the seven hundred seventeen thousand plus whatever for payroll. And I said I believe you want a breakdown of what funds were used to pay that payroll. Yes. That was my email to him. I just forwarded you the email. Okay, and him. then also who gave that authority to withdraw that money? Somebody had to. I'm sure. I'm sure Mohan is not going to just do it without somebody directing him to do it. I don't know who it was, but I'd like to find out who it was. And that's why I voted no, because we should know this. When it comes time to vote money, we should know where it's coming from, who said what, so we can have a clear idea. I'm not going to vote something out. I don't know where the money came from, or who actually, if it did come from a fund, someone has to vote it out. Someone has to give the, the, the okay, and it should be the trustees. Because they're the ones they're going to eventually have to vote on, so it should be them. And that's why, you know, I don't know if any of the trustees here did. If they did, I appreciate it. They raised their hand and said, okay, I voted it out. Obviously, no one said it, so I don't know where it came from and, and, and how the money was voted out. The trustees, the committee, you follow those questions? Thank you very much. The trustees, the committee, you follow up. All right. Anything else? Okay, let's add extra motion to adjourn. That motion is there. Second. All favor say aye. Aye.